Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2016. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Cisco, IBM, NVIDIA, and our ecosystem sponsors. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. This is Big Data NYC, our version of an event that we run in conjunction with Strata plus Hadoop World. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Joel Horowitz is here, he's with IBM, longtime CUBE guest, CUBE friend, yeah. uh, and he's the director of corp and, corporate and business development at IBM. Uh, Jim Dieters is here, he's the founder and CEO of Galvanize, and Travis Oliphant is the CEO and co-founder of Continuum Analytics. Both companies, partners of IBM. Big announcement uh, this evening. Yep. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks Good for having us. us. Yeah. Thanks for so, having us. So Joel, here. frame it for us. What's going on this week with, with IBM? How yeah. do the partnerships fit in? Yeah, well we've been on a mission over the last couple years to really accelerate what's happening in the data science community. Um, it's really exciting times. It started with our investment in Apache Spark uh, last June. Um, we recognized that Spark was, being, was, was kind of at the forefront of this new era of, of data science and analytics. Um, you know, the actual uh, you know, intention of Spark was actually machine learning. I don't know if many people know that. Now it's like tightly coupled with Hadoop, um, but Matei originally set out to build you know, machine learning open source um, you know, framework. And, and so it's, it's done very well. Um, we're actually the number two contributor to Spark ML. Um, which is exciting. Um, but we've recognized, you know, that's one part of the story, um, but there's many other parts. There's, you know, how do you actually learn how to do data science, which is why we're partnering with Galvanize, as well as how do you actually extend that, you know, core Spark framework and go beyond with all the great, you know, packages that you see both in CRAN as well as in, in Python. Um, so to tackle like a lot of, you know, emerging use cases. And that's why we partner with Continuum Analytics. Um, and Travis here to actually explore that and start broadening the community. So Jim, to talk a little yeah. bit about Galvanize. We, we know you from some of the events that we've covered, but tell yeah. us more about the organization. Well, a lot of times you, you've seen us because we've been uh, the host for a lot of these uh, convening uh, activities. But we, we run a 21st century school where we teach data science, uh, data engineers, and, uh, and software engineering. So think of it as a 21st century you know, health club for nerds. And a lot of the activities happened on our campus in San Francisco. We run a very big campus and imagine this big, beautiful, dedicated building where you have you know, data, dedicated data science faculty, hundreds of students, um, hundreds of different members of corporate innovation partners, whether that be uh, Silicon Valley Bank or Booz Allen, and, uh, and a lot of our uh, technology partners. So think of this melting pot uh, for learning, and we really, how Gal and I started was we were a consumer-based band that we taught immersive education to get people to be data scientists or engineers that have been hired with, by some of the best companies in the world. Certainly the tech elite, like the Facebook and the Airbnbs and the Teslas, but also the old guards that are becoming a data, data companies and software companies, the Amexes and financial services firms of the world as well. Now, uh, fast forward, and um, in addition to having our open enrollment consumer uh, uh, products where students come to learn and get jobs, we now have been taking our curriculum and IP and centering it towards reskilling and modernizing uh, corporations that are making these investments to build data products and to uh, replatform themselves as PaaS and, and data companies. Okay, great, and, and Travis, Continuum Analytics, yes. to give us the bumper sticker on your organization. Bumper sticker, so we've been around for four years, but we've been doing things a lot longer than that. We're really about taking community that has built out the NumPy and the SciPy ecosystem, and Pandas has been added to that over the many past many 20 years, and really delivering that to the enterprise. Uh, Python fits in your head, and it helps connect the experts with what they're trying to accomplish, without kind of messy computer science getting in the way. <laughs> At the same time, it delivers huge value because it, it can do messy computer science as well. So even the experts get excited about using Python to provide solutions. So we're really excited about the partnership with IBM because what we're trying to do is connect those advanced analytics applications that come through machine learning that's, that's very popular with scikit-learn and other packages around Python. A lot of people who make machine learning packages make it available in Python first. We want to connect that to the Spark ecosystem and the rest of the, the platform that IBM is the data first platform, data works platform that IBM is producing. So many in our audience probably know the story, early days of the automobile industry, there, there was a concern that there wouldn't be enough chauffeurs. 
to drive all these people around. So, and then the analogy, you know, place to the data science world, the big data world, everybody's worried that you need a rock star data scientist in order to get value out of data. Now maybe that was in part what the genesis of the organization was, but what have you found? You know, do I need this sort of unicorn data scientist or are you able to you know, educate people so that I can be a data-driven organization without you know, being Facebook? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think, I guess there's kind of several macros that, that come into play is um, I think one is the awareness. We were talking about Rob Thomas will be on the show later, his uh, medium post yesterday about you know, the, end of, in, the end of tech companies. And that macro is, is it doesn't matter what industry you're in, whether you're selling shoes or financial services, um, you're all data companies now. You're all, there is no such thing as tech, right? We're all, we all started in this world, tech was like this little thing over here. Now, everyone is, is a tech company and those skill sets and knowledge and understanding need to be pervasive. Clearly, a couple other things have happened is that technology continues to become more complex and more, and more granular, and the ability to use those tools, not just to be proficient in tools, but to drive the business insights and innovations that companies need to th thrive is a necessity, and I, and I truly believe that the organizations making the investments now will be the ones that actually survive and of course thrive in five or 10 years from now. And that's literally that transformation we're pushing through is happening now. So there is obviously a talent quotient that must be part of that. Chasing the, the unicorns is not necessarily the, the end all be all. And a lot of what we're doing is we're taking anyone with the aptitude, drive and determination to actually give them to the skills that make them successful. You don't need to go away for four years, and most folks that come to Galvanize in our immersive programs are career switchers, whether they had some level of post-secondary education, whether they might have studied mathematics or biology, or whether they didn't do anything and they're just poker players. We literally have frozen yogurt clerks to applied mathematics majors from Cornell that come to our programs. What we're giving them is the skill sets and the understanding of these technologies that actually make them useful for an organization. So we're kind of the opposite of the unicorn. We can, you know, we build people that can become proficient and, and successful in an organization very They've quickly. They've all got that's, a data gene, right? Yeah, that, that, that's really <laughs> part of what we've been doing the continuum though, is creating something like, so we've created Anaconda. Anaconda is an open data science platform that actually makes unicorns out of Everybody, exactly. right? And so one of the things we've often said is people are looking for unicorns everywhere. We created the PyData ecosystem, which is a unicorn feeding opportunity. We feed and everyone comes. And most of them are using Anaconda. And Anaconda gives power to the every person. Citizen data scientists can now do the kinds of things for an organization that you typically had to go to school forever. And now a program like Galvanize can absolutely, joined with Anaconda, produce uh, effective solutions for a company quickly. Exactly. Yeah, I've kind of laid it up as, the, and I think the reason why we have these two, you know, amazing partners with us today is, you know, there's really two parts of the story, right? And when you bring up the question of are there enough unicorns, um, you know, or data scientists, I would say, um, we look at it as from the standpoint of there are data producers and there's data consumers. And we're calling our event the data first event because I think a lot of times people go in and they start building an application and then they like think of data science after the fact. So I think you see two things. I think you see us you know, forming a, far, uh, a strong alliance and, and partnership with Continuum because we recognize that Python could actually address both communities. They can have folks who go deep on data and produce data products that could then turn around and use that same language, Python, and turn around and build very robust applications. You know, Python's used at you know, a number of the Fortune 500 companies. Um, for that very reason, it's the most popular um, programming language in existence um, today. Um, it's growing faster than anything else. Um, and I would say that's also the reason why you know, we're partnered with Galvanize. Python's their you know, language of choice. Um, so it really comes down to two things. It comes down to a highly robust platform that we're launching today, as well as a highly sophisticated and, and frankly approachable method um, that we're working with Galvanize on. So I think those are kind of the two parts that will solve that, that unicorn uh, problem. Yeah. So a lot of interesting <coughs> discussion points here. Particularly excited to talk to Rob a little bit about his premise. But you know, it's like Mark Benioff says, there'll be more SaaS companies coming out of non-tech companies than than tech companies, and, and, and we've, at Wikibon, we've talked a lot about how data practitioners, the, you know, the buyers of technology are going to create much more value than the, the vendors, and Rob's like, just scanned it, but talking about some of the challenges that open source vendors are, are having, you know, like John Furrier would say, why buy the milk, or why buy the cow if the milk's free? And, and so <laughs> it was struggling there. Uh, have, having, having said that, 
when you, when you look at some of the uh, activities that are going on in terms of value creation, it sort of starts with, you know, we always talk about data-driven organizations. It starts with understanding how you, how you make money. And, and I, the, I wonder if you can comment on this. A lot of people thought, okay, I want to be data-driven. I have to figure out how to make money by selling data. Mm. And that was a, the first mistake. What really happened is they said, okay, how do I make money and how can data support that? What data sources are available? How can I make that data of sufficient quality? Uh, or how can I trust that data? And so what role, first of all, is that a reasonable framework? And what role does data science play mm. in, in all of that? Yeah. Well, where to begin? <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, you're talking to the you know, folks that clearly have drunk the Kool-Aid and also work with a lot of companies in terms of what does uh, a data strategy and a set or series of data products mean for their organization? And I think, like you said, there's a maturity curve in terms of people understanding and adopting tools from building your early data repositories and lakes and getting the data somewhere. But we're, you know, in, in a lot of, for many years we've been collecting data. I think what people haven't realized is just the latent value of the insights inside that data, not just to sell it, and particularly usually it's not to sell it, it's right. to maybe better sell what you already have or repackage something into a new way or target a different co customer segment that you didn't know. And those are, and those are kind of you know, working your way through a maturity level of how you understand and use your data, how you drive value from your data, and then the different products you can build on top of your data. And I think sort of that last maturity is, you know, I think as IBM calls it sort of, transforming into a cognitive business where you're adapting to market conditions and building new offerings in, in a way that's um, you know, almost seamless or flawless, right? And, and I come from an agile software development world where we think, think about the same way. And you're basically, as you look at what's happening, you have sort of the ideas of building agile offerings, which in my opinion are just new products. The seamless integration of data in the cloud, these things are all becoming one almost, uh, you almost can't tell them apart anymore. And ideally, that's where a company wants to mature to, to address different market standards. And you pick an industry, and this is what Rob will talk about, there isn't a single industry that isn't going to have to go through a massive transformation of how people consume products. Like the largest industrial company in the world, trying to become a software company, right? GE, in the New York Times, a 124-year-old startup, where, you know, uh, Jeff Emmelt said, you know, there is no plan B. We will become a, you know, we will become a software company where the data their machines are producing are likely more valuable than the actual machines themselves. But those will open up new markets and new opportunities, not just selling. Failure's not an option there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I think there's yeah. a little misunderstanding about open source. Uh, many people are making the mistake of assuming that just because something's open source, then I should just go straight and build everything internally on top of that. <laughs> And, and I see this over and over again, having worked with open source for 20 years and having gone to companies and seen projects and developed projects in those companies. The mistake is made is as I go to each of these different companies, they all build exactly the same layer on top of the open source. Instead of, monetize, instead of amortizing the cost of that thin layer now, it's a thinner layer than the deep stack layer that they're used to paying full stack price for, but there always is a need for an enterprise layer that connects the open source with their particular value model. GE wants to become an open, uh, software company, they're not going to become a software company by rewriting a data first platform on top of that. That's not how they do it. They need to buy, they need to build the software that's specific to their business, right, yeah. benefits their specialization. Yeah. So a lot of companies are making that mistake. So there absolutely is a place, but it needs to be popularized. People need to understand it, that there's a place to buy a layer. Just because it's not the full stack like the previous proprietary vendors have provided, there is an open source base, an innovation center that keeps rising, and that's awesome, and that's amazing. But there is a layer that you need to purchase to save yourself money. So you're not paying the maintenance cost of that layer you can amortize across many other well, IBM's providers. IBM's the poster child for this. Yes, they Steve are. Steve Mills said we're going <laughs> to, IBM said we're going to invest a billion dollars in Linux. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that play again, play yep. out in Spark and other, other yep. places, but yeah. you've perfected that model of making money and adding value on top of open source. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, we definitely call you know Spark our analytic operating system. Um, we call the data science experience that we launched you know last month mm -hmm. or two months ago our IDE for working with data, right? And now we're we're basically going to announce later this evening you know what comes next, and you could probably you know guess where we're headed um, based on a lot of the conversation here. 
Um, but it's really about, okay, now that you've brought together um, you know, a way to produce data products, how do you consume that? And you know, I think IBM is the only company, in fact, I think it is the only company that has numerous ways for people to consume data products. If you look at WAS Analytics, if you look at Bluemix, if you look at you know, GBS or, and all of our industry solutions, um, there's no better way to bridge that gap. So this comes back to your earlier question, which is, you know, are there enough data scientists or data engineers? No, just like there were, you didn't need a chauffeur for a car. But you know, if you can take what they're building and repurpose that across your business, then that will give you a lot more of, you know, bang for your buck, right? I mean, there's a lot of value trapped in there that if it only had an outlet and a way to escape, right, this core group of people, you know, I think it would change the world. And I think another thing that, you know, Jim said about, you know, how we're headed towards cognitive solutions, um, I read a really good stat the other day where, you know, people make 35,000 decisions a day compared to, you know, I have a two and a half year old, um, you know, that make only 3,000 decisions a day. So you think about that, and it's like, man, that's a pretty big gap. Like, we're making lots of decisions, and especially if you're running a business, and if just a fraction of those could be either augmented or even automated so that you can focus on the stuff that matters. I mean, we're like attached to our cell phones now, or I guess we call them iPhones or whatever. You know, we're attached to these things, right? I just dated myself. You, you attach these things, but realistically, it's like you should actually be able to live in a world where a lot of that stuff gets like pushed out and you can just focus. And I think that's what this is about. Well, you're talking about operationalizing a lot of this stuff and making, Correct. making it invisible. Correct. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of the holy grail. Yeah. And, and then, and then business people can actually be at least quasi data scientists because the system's supporting them. And that's the sort of vision that you yeah. guys are putting forth, right? Absolutely, I, and I really appreciate uh, IBM promoting the Python concept. It, it's a secret sauce. It's actually been used throughout every industry. And a lot of, for a long time in the financial sector, nobody would talk about it. They all used it, nobody would tell each other. <laughs> yeah. And it was really funny as NumPy got adopted uh, how they didn't want anybody to know they were using it. Now they're okay, they recognize everybody else uses it. It's a secret sauce because of its ability yep. to agile and very quickly iterate. That's the, that's the key to getting to this world we're looking at, is how do you iterate from here's a data problem, here's an idea, I gotta, I'm going to put it in production, but then I got to update it quickly. Yep. I got to then figure out how to iterate from the production to the design back to production, and how do I make that cycle yep. as seamless and as quick as possible. That's been at the center of what we've been doing with Anaconda, and it also looks at the center of what IBM's trying to accomplish, so we're really excited about the partnership. Your community's not afraid to break things, are they? And then Correct, and so breaking it <laughs> in a governed way, right? That's the trick. No, but you know what I mean by <laughs> that. Yes. Right? Purposely, like purposely, breaking. It, purposely breaking. Purposely yeah. breaking. We, we, uh, you know, our, yes. our, our team, we've always, you know, we believe deeply in Python. All of our courses are centered, all of our data science and data engineering courses center in Python. It is sort of the language of big data. And we even help people along the way. We offer a lot of um, uh, part-time workshops even to start teaching the syntax of Python so you can start to become literate in how to manage and manipulate data. And uh, um, that progression with both Continuum and, and IBM has been uh, you know, a, a really good fit. Yeah, we're, we're super excited. So we're going to announce actually later today um, how we'll be joining uh, NumFocus, uh, IBM will, which you know, is really exciting because then you think about you know, once IBM, you know, we tend to, as you saw what happened with Spark, right? So you can imagine, we were not on the map with Spark before last year. Once we get involved, we tend to bring a lot of our resources from our you know, work with clients and customers um, to have a really positive impact on these communities. So we're going to be announcing that later today. Um, so it's, it's super fun. Uh, we're going to be announcing some more uh, really cool stuff with Galvanize as well. Um, All right, yeah, good, well we got to leave it there, but big, big shindig tonight, announcement, yeah. party, we'll be covering it. So awesome. Thanks very much Great. for coming thanks to theCUBE. Thanks for having us. Great to see you guys. Thanks. 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 You're welcome, keep it right there everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from New York City. We'll be right back.